Hello, everyone. It's Thursday. It is time, as always, for the Let's Talk About Robot Trading webinar. It's September 8th, and we get here and we come here together every single Thursday to talk about robots, how to trade them, how to create them. Actually, have we talked about how to create them? That might be fun to do someday. But we talk about stuff that I've developed, stuff that's on my mind, stuff that you can trade, concepts, stories. Hopefully, we have a really, really good time, and I'm glad you're here. This week, though, we've been talking, and I've been getting probably the most feedback I've ever gotten um, to date. And I get a decent amount of feedback. I get a, a decent amount of emails. But people are really, really interested in taking a small account to a big account, which is not surprising because I think if I had to say what is my favorite thing to talk about, it is taking a small account into a big account. Every time that I hear a webinar or I read a book on, you know, $1,000 turned into 5000 or 10000 turned into whatever or a million turned into a billion, that gets me really, really excited. So I'm not talking about that to try to titillate you or to make you interested in anything in particular. I'm just trying to open your mind to see that it's real. And, of course, when I teach you, I get to teach me, too. Um, so that's why I get so excited talking about it. Hopefully I can share something with you that makes your life better, but hopefully um, I listen to my own advice too, which I try to do 100% of the time. Not always successful, but anyway. This week though, we talked about turning 10,000 to a million. And according to our fancy hypothetical spreadsheets, of course, unless I show you the actual trading I've done, we're just going to all consider this is hypothetical. But so is everything else hypothetical, right? Anything in the past was hypothetical if we try to extrapolate that out into the future. Just because someone has gone to the store and you've been surveilling them, which is kind of creepy, but if you've been surveilling someone and they've gone to the store 30 times in a row, it's hypothetical that they'll go 31. However, <laughs> how many people would bet that they go to the store at the exact same time the 31st day? Well, of course, we all would. Um, so that's why I feel like historical data is important. Of course, it's not the end-all, be-all, but I found historical data to be um, an extremely important tool. Uh, people will talk about backtesting whether they like it or they don't. I think it's invaluable, so that's why we talk about it. Now, to the point. Today, we're going to talk about the battle of one robot versus many, hence the title of our little slideshow today. Now, last week... We talked about how one robot, just one robot, can potentially turn 10K into 1 million. We showed a spreadsheet based on data produced, and I try to produce data that is consistent, not necessarily exciting or the most profit. But I tried to give an example of how, uh, how fast it would go when you compound it. And then I took a different set of data, and I compounded that, and they came out just about the same. Isn't that interesting? But is that the only way to do it? It's exciting, and I think it's extraordinary if we're all strong enough and tough enough psychologically to take 10,000 and turn it into a million in 6.2 years or 6.4 years or whatever the number is. But is that the only way to do it? Is there a better way that we could take 10,000 into a million? Because as I said last time we got together, a million dollars is a lot of money. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. A million dollars is a lot of money, and wouldn't that be fun to have it someday? Well, here's the thing, and this is a very tricky discussion, so stay with me. With one robot that we showed, and remember I talked about what's the max drawdown, right? I jacked up the trade size, so we'd have to be willing to suffer a 50% drawdown at least according to our historical hypothetical data. Did that happen? Was anybody paying attention? Did that happen last week on our spreadsheet? Did we lose 50%? Well, of course the answer was um, yes. From a month end basis, we lost like 39%, which means on a day-to-day -day basis, most assuredly we reached that 50% time frame or that 50% drawdown in that time frame. However, here, let me just make one quick point about this drawdown. When we talk about maximum drawdown, and this is so important, this is the worst that it's ever done in that series of data. So I go back as far as I can with the data, and the worst it ever did was blank. Let's say on a $10,000 account, it's $5,000. I think last week it was like $4,900, something like that. doesn't matter. $5,000, okay. 
That's the worst it ever did. So we have to plan as traders, we have to plan for the worst. But this is a very important point. Is that ever going to happen again? Hmm. Well, the answer is obviously we don't know. Furthermore, is that 50% drawdown, if it does happen again, when will it happen? And that is an absolutely critical thing. I want to give you the worst possible scenario, and I want you to plan for the worst. Absolutely. Be prepared for the worst. Your life is only as good as your worst day. I mean, that's an essay or a seminar, webinar. We can do it another time. Your trading is only as good as your worst moment. So if your worst moment is 50%, let's, let's plan for that. However, if you recall from the spreadsheet, that 50% drawdown happened after our $10,000 account had gone to like $450,000 or whatever. And I can find that spreadsheet somewhere. It's somewhere on my messy desktop that someone made fun of me the other day. Um, what would happen to your psyche or how would you feel if this 50% drawdown happened after you turned 10,000 into 400,000. Well, it would stink, right? Nobody likes drawdown. But wouldn't it be significantly easier to take this 50% drawdown if it happened after we'd gained like 1,000% or whatever, right? 100%, 200%, 500%. If we took the drawdown then, we're still wildly in profit. So keep that in mind. I'm trying to paint a very grim picture about this maximum drawdown because it's important. But we don't know, A, if it's ever going to happen again, maybe that was the worst it's ever done. Maybe it'll do better. Or B, when will it happen? If a 50% drawdown happens after you've made a ton of money, do we really care? Now, of course, there's C, it might do worse than 50%. But I feel like we can be reasonably comfortable that that max drawdown is a decent number. And surely, forgive me if your name is Shirley, surely we can take action then if we get to that 50% max drawdown, we can start saying, hey, what's going on here? At least we have kind of a warning flag there to um, pay attention to. Okay, so there's my little rant on max drawdown. It's so important that you understand this concept and why it's important. Now, 50%, getting back to our example, 50% is pretty high for most people. I think I read a study done, I shared it with um, one of my members, that most people, there's a study, can take like 10 to 20%. I think that's about the maximum. And 10 to 20% is seriously not fun. I talked to uh, another person uh, that's trading robots and had the same conversation, and they said the same thing, about 10 to 20%. That seems to be the number. Well, we're talking here in this exercise is 50%. Now, everyone sits here together, and I feel like we can do it, and we can band together and be strong and make it, but I'm just telling you, most people cannot take 50%. So if you're stronger and better um, with your risk management than most people, 50% is perfectly fine, and that exercise is accurate for you. But if 50% is a little too high for you, is there anything we can do to maybe make that drawdown less aside from just trading a smaller trade size. Okay, so let's talk about that. What would the max drawdown be if we diversified? I am a huge proponent of diversification. Uh, I believe in it. I've done the research and it it is an important topic for us to talk about. So let's talk about it right now. Click change slide, gosh darn you. So let's take our example, what if you diversified? Well, in this particular example we're talking about today, let's use an eight robot portfolio. I've talked about an 11 robot portfolio many times. I've traded an 11 robot portfolio for several months, but let's use eight. Why? Well, we talked about it in a blog post uh, or a webinar the other day, the other week, but if you want a free VPS, and I don't want to make more costs for you in your trading, Oanda offers a free VPS if you become a member, especially if you drop my name. I don't know if, you, I, if my name gets you a special deal, but that's what I'm told to do, and, and please do that because Justin will take care of you. If you go through Justin, uh, make sure you tell him my name. Anyway, VPS is free if you use nine or less, so I just use eight. You see where I'm going? I don't want you to trade a portfolio that makes you have to upgrade to a higher VPS, and it costs you money out of your pocket, so let's use eight. 
for those two reasons, I think I like eight better and it can get a VPS for free, okay? Now, if we use that eight over the same data that we talked about last time with our one robot, the profit overall would be about $20,000 less over that 13 year period, right? That one robot, when you jacked up the leverage, returned around six figures, okay? This one is about $20,000 less if you tried to keep the trade sizes apples to apples. But, so you say, well, 20,000 less, well, A, why is that? And B, that stinks, I'm not doing it then. I'm not, I'm not diversifying, haha, uh -huh. not so quick. The maximum monthly drawdown for a diversified eight person, person, eight robot portfolio is less than half. In other words, the worst month on a diversified portfolio, according to our data, is 1,059 against $10,000 account, right? At least it starts at 10,000. The worst month was 1,000. The worst single month with the one robot we talked about was 2827. Look at that. We've taken the drawdown and mashed it into a thousand pieces, right? That is way, way less. Now I understand that this is less. Twenty thousand is money, and compounded twenty thousand makes a difference even bigger between the two. I understand that, but when we're talking about pain, right? This is the worst losing month as compared to this losing month. That is a big deal, and maybe that appeals mightily to you. It's worth considering, which is why I'm so I'm such a big proponent of diversification as a theory. The percentage of winning months also goes way up. Because you're diversified, because you're trading eight rather than one, your percentage of profitable months goes up to 85%. That's a lot. That's very few losing months per year. The winning, the profitable months, the profitable winning percentage for the one robot is only 73, so three out of four, right? So if it's three out of four, you're looking at how many losing months per year, right? Three or four a year, or is this, you might get one or two a year, maybe just one, maybe none. So yes, it's less money, but look what we're trading off. We get a much better, worse month, and we get way more winning months. Does that matter to you? It might. So if it's that much better, why not diversify? Why didn't I just start with diversification in the first place? Well, here are the important points for you. And I keep saying important because it is important. That's why I keep saying it. These are very uh, crucial items. Let's talk about them. Why not diversify? What's the argument? I said it was a battle between one and many. Let's battle. The psychological aspect of trading a portfolio rather than one. Sip of water. Mm, delicious. Do you like a lot of trades coming at you in waves? Do you like to turn on your computer or log into your VPS and see a bunch of trades on? Do you? I've said many times that I've never liked it. <laughs> no matter how much I want to like it, I don't like it. I haven't liked it since the beginning. And remember, I've traded as many as 15 at one time. 15 different robots is the biggest that I've gone personally with live money. And I really didn't like 15. That was a couple years ago. Uh, I turned that off within weeks. That was ugh, trade, 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 trade. But that's just me. It doesn't have to be my way. I'm just telling you. I just don't like a cascade of trades. I like to work on what kind of one trade at a time. That's, that's the way I feel. All right. What if you have a nice winner, right? You're trading an eight robot portfolio. What if you have a nice winner? Oh man, it went right to its target. It was clean. It was very little drawdown. Oh look, my account went up. This feels awesome. I have a good day. Sun is shining, birds are chirping, everything's great. And then because you're not trading just that one, you're trading eight, you come back two hours later and you've taken two losers. How do you feel about that, right? This is, this is something I really want you to consider. Would you be like, I'm a portfolio manager and I don't give a rip. That's perfectly fine. I understand that by trading eight, I'm going to have up and down. That's what it's there for. That's what diversification is by definition. That is no problem. Or do you feel like that really, really sucks? I was excited for a minute. I was having a good day and now the sun is no longer shining and birds are no longer chirping. I feel crappy. 
and here's what I'm going to do. I know I just I wanted to trade a portfolio, but if I get a winner, I want to turn off the rest of the robots. I just want to enjoy it. I want to savor it. I want to look at my account that's risen. So I'm going to turn the robots off the rest of the day. I'll start up again tomorrow with my eight robot portfolio. Well, guess what? If that's the way you feel, diversification will ruin you. You're going to get the worst that a portfolio, the worst of the benefits, and the worst of the worst. You're going to get less profit, and you're going to get more losers. If you don't like taking all of the trades, it will ruin everything. So this is not a small thing. If you don't like trades coming at you in waves, portfolio uh, trading could be very difficult for you and or not successful for you. This I underline because this is a huge topic, and you might be brilliant enough to figure it out on your own. I'll give you a couple possible solutions. You never know if you're trading a portfolio how many trades you're going to get. Do you understand? If you're trading eight, you don't know whether you're going to trade all eight or trade just one. Or maybe you'll get three this day, or maybe you'll get five. You never know. You understand? I mean, that just makes sense. So if your limit, if your margin limit for your $10,000 account is three full lots, let's say, okay, you're, and you have eight robots and three full lots, well, then how do you size your portfolio? I mean, this is, this is a huge question. Do you just divide it, right? You take three full lots, you divide it by the eight robots, and you trade 0.375 lots for each one. Okay, fine. I do recommend trying to keep your trade sizes for your portfolio very homogenous, almost all the same. But, right, so this adds up to three. So what we've done here is if all of the robots are in a trade at the same time, we probably have enough margin. We probably do. Okay, that's safe. However, <laughs> they're not all going to be in at the same time. How many days are you ever going to have all eight robots in? Few and far between. Okay. However, here's the trade-off. If you divide it evenly so that for sure you'll get all the trades, you will make less money than you would trading one robot. Because the one robot, we know what our max drawdown is. We know what our trade size is. We only have to worry about one trade taken per day. We can size that perfectly. If you have eight, how do you size it perfectly? You can't, right? So you could say, well, I probably will only be in four trades at a time. So I'm going to increase my trade size so that if they're all in a trade together, actually some trades won't even take because I've run out of margin. Or I'll be in the middle of a trade and it will close it out as a loser because I ran out of margin. But that's not going to happen very time, very much and I'll just deal with it. Well, if you do that, then all your data projections are going to be off. Maybe not substantially off, right? Maybe not. Or maybe so. It becomes extremely difficult to size it high enough as opposed to the one robot where you can size almost exactly. If you don't get trades or you get stopped out of trades, everything's affected. If you bet too little, you make less money than one robot. So it's a very tricky situation. But if you like math and you like messing around with this sort of thing, this can be a project that you can take on yourself. That can be kind of a fun thing for you if you like that sort of thing. But what I did is I said, okay, I'm just going to divide it evenly and see what that looks like. So that's what we're talking about today. If you divide it evenly, and know that you'll never go over margin because you've sized it, you've divided by eight, right? Three lots divided by eight or whatever it is, whatever your margin is. Then the drawdown, you can see that the drawdown is still lessened dramatically and you still get more winning months. But it's tricky, okay? So that's point number two. Point number three, the bad times aspect. You have to consider when you trade a bunch of robots and it doesn't go well, let's say you have three months in a row, just, you know, just spitballing here. What if you have three months in a row that aren't bad but aren't great, just slight losers? That's 90 days of crap. How do you know what's wrong? Well, I mean, do you ever know what's wrong? Maybe not, but there are, you can really get a good idea the smaller amount of robots that you, that you trade with. For example, if you're trading an eight-robot portfolio, maybe the Aussie N ruins it for everything. And so maybe you have three down losing months strictly because of the Aussie N or maybe the pound cat, or maybe the euro dollar. What if it's two, though? What if it's a euro dollar and the Aussie N? What if your 
connection accidentally went off and the Aussie yen took a bigger loss than normal and that screwed it up. It's very difficult, it's possible, right? I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's very difficult to find out why you're underperforming when you've got eight variables. That just makes sense. If you have eight kids, it's hard to find out who stole the cookie out of the cookie jar. It's just harder, right? Did one robot screw it up? Did two? Did was it execution? Did my VPS not work? Did my what is it? The difference is with one robot, you know right away. You know if that trade went off because you're watching it. You only got one thing to watch. You know if you've gone through a bad losing streak. It's easy to keep track of. You know when the max drawdown is reaching its level. You know all this, and you know it exactly, and you can stop immediately and fix it. With a bigger portfolio, this is much more difficult. So think about that. Fourth point, you aren't always trading what you like. I've heard portfolio on, on audio podcast interviews and read it myself where portfolio managers will say they will put stuff in their portfolios that they don't even like to trade. Why? Because diversification is king, and I understand that. They will put robots or trading systems or currency pairs or instruments, whatever, into their portfolio that don't even win, right? They're losers. Trend followers do this a lot. They'll put like the pound Swiss in their portfolio, even though it's been losing for two straight years. Why? Because they feel like diversification is the king. Well, how do you feel? It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what portfolio managers think. What do you think? Would you like trading something that you don't like? What if when you trade eight, you don't like two of them? Well, now what do you do, right? You committed to trading eight and you don't like it when you're in a trade. That can be a problem, okay? Then you take that out of your portfolio. Well, now we've got a different set of data that we have to look at, and maybe you stopped right before it turned around, and so you took all the losing of this robot, but you didn't get back in and take the winning. There's something to be said. In fact, there's a lot to be said about trading what you like. I say it all the time. I'm gonna say it again before we're done. And if you have stuff in your portfolio you don't like, that could be problematic. And last for today, more things can go wrong if you have eight. That's just common sense. When you have more people, you have more variables in a group. When you have more robots, you have more variables, right? There's all sorts of things that can go wrong if you have eight robots. Are all the inputs right? Is it possible that you accidentally juxtaposed a number? I've done it. <laughs> I've accidentally put in the wrong number, and I tried to double check and triple check it. It happens. When you have eight, you might think everything's right, you go through a mild losing streak, but it's mild enough where you don't check it, and then you realize later your input was wrong, right? If the power, for example, another problem, if the power shuts down and you're in five open trades, you can get to your mobile app and start shutting them down, but it is scary to have five trades out there. You have to call the ON to help desk, or if it's a different time and they're not available, or you're on hold and you try to do it with your app and you're trying to close down five trades, or maybe you don't have your phone. It to be in a lot of trades and have the power go out. This hasn't happened to me in a long time, but it's happened, and it is harrowing. If you have one robot, we can get that taken care of, right? You just go in, you close it out. It's just easier to handle. If your platform goes down, this is a tiny thing. If your platform goes down and you need to recreate MT4, sure is easy with one chart. It sure isn't easy if you have eight charts, right? This is, that's just a tiny thing. Oh, but guess what? It's happened to me. And just being in the market opens up to you to more things. If you're diversified, you are exposed on more fronts. That CHF, the Swiss announcement that happened a couple years ago where it dropped 1,000 pips in, in a second, you're open to that. It didn't affect me. My robots weren't in a trade and whatever, but it could have. If you're just in one robot, your chances of getting a rogue wave or a rogue event are less. That's just common sense. You don't get the diversification benefits, but you also stay out, of, stay out of danger. And last, and this is a menial thing, and just do the work, I understand that, but if your account is doing well and you need to change the trade sizes, again, you've got to do it eight times rather than one. Or if your account goes through a mild drawdown, now you have to eight, change eight rather than one. That's a little bit of a pain. These are just, I'm trying to get everything out there, all right? You need to decide which matters to you. And here's the bottom line. Don't do what I do. I'm going to give you everything I do, but take what you like and throw out what you don't. Personally, I don't like a lot of trades. How many times do I have to say it? Furthermore, this exercise, like we talked about, I've done it 
with one robot for a year. And I liked it. It doesn't mean it was perfect. It uh, doesn't mean I traded it as well as I tried. Last week I said I traded it so well. Well, I looked at a couple blog posts <laughs> that I did early on in that experiment, uh, and I wasn't so perfect. <laughs> I think I overestimated myself quite a bit. But I didn't stop, and I didn't hesitate, and I kept it going. So I guess that's good. But I've done this experiment for 12 months with just one robot, and I liked it. Uh, I've never been able to enjoy trading a bunch of robots. I've tried it. I've tried it for months. I understand the benefits. I believe in diversification. I just don't like it. I believe that spinach is good for you. I just don't like it. I want to like spinach. I want to like kale. I, I eat relatively healthy, but I can't stand spinach and kale, right? Just because it's good for you doesn't mean you like it. I'm just telling you, I don't like it. In my life, in my coaching, in my career, in my studying in school, I just prefer focus. And I like the precision of fixing problems and using accurate trade size. I like to be able to go in after trading it both ways for several months. I think I prefer accurately fitting the trade size and going for it. I think that's where I'm at right now. I like getting to know one currency pair. I like intense relationships and not have that many rather than have a bunch of light relationships with a lot of people. I'm a very focused person, and I feel unfocused when I trade a lot of robots. I felt that way, right? Furthermore, there's a book called Small Giants. It's a pretty, good, pretty darn good book, and it's about companies that stayed small even though they could have gone big. It's small business owners that have been offered, well, why don't you, you take your one store? What if you had 10 stores? If you had 10 stores, you'd be more diversified. You'd have multiple income streams. You could grow. You could be a billionaire. And these small giants said, no, I like it small. I'm in control. I have a handle on all the problems. I know the people. I can fix it immediately when it's wrong. If I have 10 stores out there and a couple stores are underperforming, what's going wrong? Is it the manager? Is it the weather? Is it the traffic pattern? What is it? It's hard to fix. With one, it's easy to fix. And that's what the book Small Giants is all about. And I loved reading that book when I read it a year, year and a half ago. I didn't realize that it would affect my trading until recently, all right? So that all being said, these are my thoughts. doesn't matter what I think. I'm just sharing with you. If you look at the numbers, though, there is a great case to diversify, and I totally get it. And I probably will take a small amount of money and still be diversified, right? But I'm going to take the bulk of my money and start focusing. That's just what I'm doing. But I am totally on board with anyone who wants to diversify. Uh, I think it's phenomenal. And there are benefits. There are obvious slap-your-face benefits to being diversified. Oh, but then, of course, how do you pick? You do what you like. Got it? So please, don't be influenced by what I think. Hear all the points and make your own decisions. All right. Let's take a few questions, and then we'll wrap up. Let's go back. Kale and liver suck. They're both really good for you, though, Douglas, by the way. Um, I don't like either. <laughs> so I, I agree with you. All right, scrolling back on these questions here. Um, doo -doo -doo, uh, oh, lots of good questions today. Excellent. Maybe, uh, oh, I'm still scrolling. All right, here we go. Finally got back to it. All right. Um, do not have, Dennis says, do not appear that you lost any of your principal. Right. In that particular drawdown, if you're talking about the same thing I was talking about, when the 50% drawdown happened, Dennis, um, you're right. None of your principal is gone. This drawdown can happen much later. It doesn't have to happen when you turn on the robots. Assume it will. Plan for the worst. But you're right. If a 50% drawdown happens after you've made a bunch of money, right, you haven't lost anything. And that's an important point. Um, you'd be, Dennis says, using the house money. You got it. Precisely. Going this small to large account trade, you have to assume the entire nut is lost. And if you're okay with that, let it fly. Well, I don't want to lose everything, Douglas, right? I want to lose, I'm willing to lose 50% of it. But yes, you have to be willing to lose it and then let it fly. You're exactly right. The initial investment, absolutely. Um, so I can't read it. Ilama, I hope I said that right. No minimum dollar amount for free VPS. They would know for sure, but I don't think so. I think they're pretty open. I don't think there's a minimum, um, but this isn't set up through me. It's not something that I do. It's something they offer to me and my lifetime members uh, and people in general, I think. So ask Awanda, specifically ask Justin, the best customer service person ever. I love working with Justin. Um, Dennis says, 5,000 year account gets you the VPS at no charge. Okay, well, there it is, 5,000. 5, I didn't know what the number is. Um, 
I have a decent amount of money in there, so um, it worked for me, but I guess 5,000. Eight is too many, how about three? I'm all for three, and that's something we can talk about also. I like five is a number, three is good, three to five, all of that is fine with me. I think eight may be too big, but eight gives you a nice diversification effect. Um, I really feel sorry for the USA traders, 400 to 500 to one, says Paul. Um, yes, I feel sorry for me too. You can get 1,000 to one. Um, there is a lot of stuff you could do if you had more leverage. Yeah, 30 to one on the robot I talked about, right? It's just not that great. How about one robot for every 2,500? You could also do that. You could put one robot and make them different robots and do different accounts, something we can talk about later. But isn't the case of looking at what is probable for the portfolio and then make it sure it's got enough to get to the target. And hey, if it's only makes 700,000 in 13 years, well, keep on going. Exactly, right? If you love the lack of drawdown and 10 turns into 650,000, who's going to cry, right? Nobody's going to cry. And meanwhile, your journey to a million would be a lot more stable. Totally on board with that. I totally understand that. Um, Scott, my question, imagine the currencies lose, lose value. I'm thinking hyperinflation. This affect the robots trading and all. Well, we don't know ever what's going to happen in the future, but the testing periods that these robots have gone through are 2008, 2006, 2010, 2012. There's been all sorts of crazy environments and day trading robots with small profit targets tend not to be affected by macro environment. They just really don't. Um, if you're a trend follower, yeah, inflation and all those macro events matter. But for a day trading, when a trade that's over in 45 minutes, for a couple hours, these big events don't actually tend to have much of an effect. At least that's my experience. Talon says, you're not cooking it correctly yet. Talon, you're probably right. Um, send me all your kale. <laughs> uh, I think my girlfriend loves kale. So there's kale around. It's just uh, not eaten by me. Please send everyone we start this. Uh, everyone wants to start. Doug says, everyone, we're starting October 1st. So whether you're in or not, Douglas wants you to be in, and they want to go for it. Douglas um, would love to uh, have a group of us trade this together, and I'm all for that, absolutely. I'll be doing it myself, so you definitely have me here every Thursday to help you. Um, the more the merrier. That's fine with me, absolutely. All right, let's wrap it up. Those are the questions that I got. Quick updates, and we'll get out of here. I did go live on my 100% robot with the New Zealand dollar. Um, guess what? Guess what happens? Two winning trades. I told you this stuff. It, it's not about the winning. This, these types of robots win. It's about the drawdown. So um, I'm in. Very small trade size, but I'm in. Um, I want to see it get into trouble. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I want, I'm interested to see how I handle trouble. I know what the max drawdown is, so I have plans for everything that could possibly happen. Um, but is it fun to get two winning trades right off the bat? Yes, it is. Um, I'm working on another robot, too. That's a lie. I'm working on actually two robots, one brand new, and then I'm actually testing this 100%. I built a robot for TradeStation, the 100% robot. I built it for TradeStation. I built another one. Um, so I'm actually working on two right now. Isn't that exciting? But anyway, um, like I said, I'll still be uh, dabbling in diversification. So just because my favorite is trading one doesn't mean I won't be diversifying. Um, so if you like diversification, I'll be, uh, I will be diversifying with those of you that do. Uh, if you're a lifetime member and you want to diversify, um, I'll be in there with you, uh, just with a smaller amount of money. Um, YouTube, and I always say it, I'm getting um, a lot of people are signed up for the YouTube channel. That really helps me out. I can, this is where this video will go every week. It just gives me an easy way to make sure everybody gets the information. So um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. It's a huge help. There's the contact information. That's my email. Email me anytime. I'm in the middle of a huge amount of social engagements. I'm still in Ohio. I'm seeing a bunch of my old students. Um, I've had more social engagements than I've had in my entire life. It's been great, but it's totally against my character. I'm, I'm pretty antisocial, as it turns out. But I'm having coffee, and I'm having dinners, and I'm having going to some tennis matches, and it's been really fun, and I've got two more social events tonight. So I will be on my email, but just not as often uh, for the next two days. But absolutely email me, and I'll get back to you. won't be any big trouble at all. All right, that's all for this week, everyone. We'll be back next week with a blog post on Wednesday and a webinar on Thursday. Bye for now. We'll talk to you soon.